Fortunate is he. Fortunate is he who remembers Allah abundantly. Worldly distractions cannot mildly sway his thoughts of Allah and Judgment Day. Righteous is he. Righteous is he who bows to one he cannot see. Whose deeds do not spring without Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our program, The Excellence of Manners. I'm your host, Muhammad Mamdouh. And we are talking about manners that we as Muslims are supposed to have and that we've been taught by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These manners are there to help us deal with all situations in life and we've established the 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 basis of good manners and uh, things like telling the truth and being kind and being gentle and being patient and all these are good foundations to have and we add on to these foundations uh, controlling your what you say uh, when what you say what you say when you speak and so on and so forth. We've come now to the etiquettes of eating and drinking. And we've, uh, we're have we doing this on two episodes. So if you've uh, followed the first episode of this topic, we began by saying that it's important to understand that seeking provisions, your food and drink, from a halal source is more important than actual etiquettes. Because if your food is coming in from a haram uh, source, then it doesn't really make sense to focus on eating properly because your source is uh, from a haram place. So this is, a, in a logical sequence, your, the place of, uh, your source of provision needs to be halal. And then you look at the etiquettes of how to do things as the Prophet ﷺ taught us, uh, such as eating, uh, saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when you uh, begin eating, you eat with your right hand, you uh, eat whatever is closest to you, and that we say Alhamdulillah at the end of uh, our food and we thank Allah for uh, the food and the provisions and everything that He's given us and the benefits of saying these and it gives us barakah and may Allah bless us uh, f- for w- with what He has given us. Uh, I'm joined of course with Sheikh Saeed Al-Qadi from London who has been going through these and teaching us the etiquettes of eating and drinking. Sheikh Saeed, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Muhammad. Hayak Allah. Allah hayak. Allah bless you. Jazakum Allah khair. Um, we, of course, started with the etiquettes and we, uh, as I just said, uh, what we do at the beginning and, and the end. Uh, and now we're just going to go through all kinds of situations that we need to learn that we're going to be in Inshallah. in order for mm-hmm. us to deal with. Uh, the first one I would say is uh, when you are invited to uh, to food, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily at someone's house, but if you are fasting uh, on a day that is not during Ramadan, like a voluntary fast, and somebody offers you food, uh, what is the recommended uh, etiquette here? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. All praise due to Allah alone. We praise him, we thank him, we seek his guidance and his forgiveness. We repent to him, we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and our sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, none can mislead, and whoever Allah misleads, none can guide. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala nabina Muhammad. If you are invited for a food, then you should answer the invitation. Especially if that invitation is for a marriage uh, food. Uh, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Muhammad, إِذَا دُعِيَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَىٰ طَعَامٍ فَلْيُجِبُ If one of you is invited for a food, then let him answer the invitation. Then he said, if you are fasting, if you are fasting, then فَلْيُصَلِّ me Let him supplicate for the host. Make dua for him. If you don't want to break your fast. Although you are, you have the choice to break your fast if that Fasting is voluntary fasting. You can break your fast. But if you chose not to, you can, you can make supplication for the person or for the host. Make dua for him. This is a sunnah. Otherwise, if you're not fasting, you should eat with him. You should eat with him. So the rule here is to accept mm. an invitation when you're invited. Yeah, especially you if it is for a marriage invi- uh, invitation. Especially for a marriage Walima. invitation. We call it walima. After, after marriage. Yeah. Yes. Inshallah. And uh, when you're fasting, you have the 
an option either to, to break. To if break it's voluntary not. fasting, you should, you should break it and eat, and then uh, you can make abatawuz next time. Uh, what if you are invited, for example, to someone's house mm. and your, your friend is with you that day? Mm. Uh, and the, the person, the host, has only invited you. Mm. Can you bring along someone without telling the host? Well, it's not from the etiquette of, uh, of, of going to your brother or visiting your brothers. Uh, if, some, if, if, uh, if somebody uh, followed you and you're going to someone else's house, you should inform the host. Or uh, in case if you couldn't inform him, then at least once you arrive at, at his door, you should say to him that this man followed me or this man is with me. Will he allow him or not? And we have the Sunnah, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi on one occasion, he was invited for a uh, food. And uh, one of the Sahaba followed him. He went with him. Uh, and he says, Sallallahu Alaihi to the host, once they arrived at the door, he said to him, that this man followed us. If you want, you can allow him. If you don't want, we can ask him to return back. The Sahaba said, Rasulullah, no, I will allow him. He can come in. The Sunnah is to do that, to inform the host and let him know about... Uh, about you, the, the one who's accompanying you. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Uh, I know some of these questions are just uh, basically, they're just consideration. I mean, it's always good to consider That's someone's right. situation, That's right. but it's also good to establish mm. them as part of the sunnah because That's you right. also get reward mm. when you do right. something exactly. with Prophet exactly. Even when it's just so simple consideration, you pick up the phone <laughs> and you ask someone, know. yeah, let them know. Let them know. Uh, and when you're invited mm. to someone's house mm. or not necessarily mm. someone's house, and they, prov- uh, you know, put down a plate of mm. something, uh, food that you might not like. <laughs> uh, what what should you do in a situation like this? Well, if you don't like a food, just uh, leave it. Don't eat from it. Okay, but don't find the fault in a food. Don't say this food is uh, too much salt in it. This food doesn't. I don't. It's bad. It's not good. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never found uh, fault with food. Uh, if he likes it, he will eat it. If he doesn't, he will just leave it. So he never negatively criticized, and that, never. that should be never. our etiquette. Yeah. Because he might, he, might, he might don't like it, and other th- 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 like it. Yeah. Other people like it. So if you like it, eat it. If you don't, just leave it. Um, what, what should we do when we're eating with a group of people? Uh, are there certain etiquettes that are supposed to be practiced when we are with a group of people? Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, the main thing, if you are uh, with a group of people, the main thing, if there is something that is served uh, around, make sure that you don't take two things at a time. For example, if there is a tray of dates or a tray of uh, fruits uh, and it's circled around, make sure you don't take two dates at a time. Take one at a time. Unless if you take permission from them. Take one at a time or take one full at a time. This is sunnah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, don't yes, eat two things at a time if you are in a, in, in a gathering. Unless if you take permission from everyone. So just yeah. to, just, uh, it shows some as well consideration to people. Really? Right? And yeah. is, because mm-hmm. also if you take if everyone is taking mm. one and you take two, mm. this might you know it's not yeah. fair, it's and not it fair. might cause you know your brother to feel something that That's it's fine. not necessary. Yeah, it's not necessary situation. All you have to do is just uh, ask, and it won't be a problem. Uh, I wanted to mention something. Mm. Uh, perhaps you can enlighten us on this. Um, people have different uh, manners mm. in different cultures. Mm. Uh, if if this is their culture, mm. to uh, for example, go from you know, like an older person to a young person or to mm. whatever culture they have with different foods and stuff, mm. stuff mm. like that. Uh, is it also good to uh, adhere to the different culture? Is it part of uh, when the, you go if, to a... If the culture doesn't uh, contradict with the sunnah, then it's okay. You can go with the culture. But if the culture uh, contradicts with the sunnah, then you should stick, uh, to, stick to the sunnah. Jazakum yeah. uh, um, the, the 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 issue of food here that we're talking about is because Everyone, of course, eats and needs mm-hmm. to eat. No. So it's this uh, ritual, daily ritual that we have. And some people put uh, a lot of emphasis in it and some people don't. And mm-hmm. it's just everything that, it's something that everyone can relate to. That's right. Uh, why is this such an important issue? And what is the barakah that is associated or the blessing associated with food? Why, what is associated with food? Uh, from? How can, probably, how can we gain barakah? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um... To gain barakah in the food, first of all, if you are in a gathering, make sure you eat together. 
there are many people around you or you are with, with, with the, or in a company of people, eat together to have more barakah, to have more blessing in your food. And Nabi Sallam in one occasion, uh, some of the companions came to him and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, we eat but we don't feel satisfied. We always eat but we never feel satisfied. He Sallam said, perhaps you eat separately. This is Ya Rasulullah, yes, we eat separately. He said, then eat together and begin with the name of Allah. If you want barakah, begin with the name of Allah and eat together. Don't eat separately. So first uh, method to bring blessing. Uh, so you should find food. every opportunity to invite people to eat with you. To invite people to eat with you. Or if you are together, don't yeah. eat separately. Eat, eat, eat together, together. In the same. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, secondly, don't eat from the middle of the vessel. Eat from the sides. Eat from the sides. In the hadith, and the sound hadith Sahih Bukhari, uh, that the barakah is... Uh, in, uh, will, will be descended upon the middle of the food. The barakah descends upon the middle of the food. So eat from the sides so that you can have more food. Eat from the sides of the vessel. Don't eat from the middle. So and if there's a if there's a plate, basically mm-hmm. you eat from, from your whatever is closer to you, and then you, you eat the sides you. until you get to the center. So the, uh, should, should, the, the, the last thing should be the, the middle of the... the, middle of the uh, and also... Uh, if uh, a morsel falls from you, make sure you take it and you clean it up and eat it. Don't leave it. Because we have in the hadith as well, in the, the sound hadith, that uh, if a morsel falls from you, take it, pick it up, clean it, and eat it because you don't know where is the barakah, where is the blessing. It might be in that morsel. Also, once you finish, if you want also barakah and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure that you lick your finger. You either lick your finger or have it licked. Probably by your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so lick your finger because in the, also in the hadith, and the sound hadith, you don't know what is the barakah. Lick your finger once you finish the food. Don't wash your hand before you lick your finger. So okay. these are all the, the methods, to bring, methods to bring barakah when you're, when you're doing a simple, so mm. something like eating. There's a, a right way mm. to do it and there's a way where you can get the most benefit from no. something that you, you're going to do anyway. Mm. So why don't you do it the, in the, correct, the, in the way, correct way and more gain barakah. barakah no, also. Uh, I wanted to mention also that uh, dropping the food this is also uh, something that happens very frequently. And some people, you know, they shy away from doing this. Mm. And that uh, even at the Prophet Sallallahu time, mm-hmm. he's mentioning it and, you know, it's not like dirt back there, was it? It's the same no, as dirt no, back no, here, it's the same. 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 Uh, Just take it, pick it up and clean and eat it, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll inshallah. come back with our uh, etiquettes of eating and drinking. Please stay tuned to the Excellence of Manners. Jazakumullah khair, as alaykum wa rahmatullah. Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Hopefully we'll discuss some, some tips on, on how to increase the, the ability of getting the du'a or the supplication answered. Allah delays giving you what you want and gives you a reward that is equal to that or better in this life or in the world to come uh, for giving you your sins and giving you good deeds. I'm going to look at some questions that we've asked some of our brothers on the street. Uh, we asked them, should Muslims have a dialogue with other religions? We're going to need some stability. So. We, uh, it doesn't matter where we live, we need to care for those ones to give them the rights that Allah gives. This life is not the eternal life, it is a test. Particularly for the youth of today. So if there are any parents or uncles or whoever is watching, if you have 16, 17, 18, 20 year olds with you, make sure they stop doing whatever they're doing and come in and watch this show, inshallah. <laughs> Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our program, The Excellence of Manners. Before the break, we were discussing some etiquettes of eating. 
and we're discussing this with our dear guest Sheikh Saeed. Sheikh Saeed, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Muhammad. Allah hik. Allah blessi. Jazakum Allah khair. We were discussing uh, some of the etiquettes when you eat in in a group of people and the barakah that comes to you while you're eating and some of these uh, etiquettes that you're supposed to share uh, share as much as possible when you're eating. Don't eat alone. That's right. And if you uh, something falls from you. Uh, Pick it up and clean, clean it and eat it, and the the baraka is mm-hmm. is mentioned in that because we don't know where the baraka is. And also, when you're eating from a plate of food, try to eat from, from the, sides. Th- the sides and closest to you, and the sides. Yes. And also, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, it's true that also to a basic rule in Islam mm. is not to waste anything. So That's don't right. leave anything definitely. behind. Definitely. Don't leave half of your food and then throw it away. Right. Because this is no. definitely a no-no. Uh, and also, if you eat together, you won't leave anything. Because you eat it together, you will, isn't it? But if you take something for yourself only, you yeah. might end up leaving something. So exactly. Right. So this is one of the other things Inshallah. that if you get a plate, a big <laughs> plate by yourself and you're eating by yourself, you're more likely to leave something, something behind. Bend, yeah. And it's going to be wasted as opposed to somebody else having uh, the benefit. Um, Another etiquette that we want to focus on is uh, the position of eating. Ah. Uh, we said that you eat with your right hand, but what about the position of sitting? Can we sit or uh, lean back and uh, recline? Uh, are there etiquettes of positions? Uh, the main thing, don't eat while you are reclining or you are, while you are leaning on, your, uh, on something, uh, on the wall or on your hand. Eat, uh, the sunnah is to eat uh, while you are... Um, as Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, one of the ulama said, one of these scholars said that you should eat while your right knee is erected and your left knee is bent down. So you bend down your left knee and you erect your right knee. This is sunnah how to eat. Uh, uh, Imam Baghdadi said as well that you are allowed to put a mattress behind you, beneath you if you want. You can put a mattress, but don't, le- don't lean on the wall or lean on, on a pillow while you are eating. So you basically sit up. Like yeah. your, your back is straight. I don't eat at all while I'm uh, reclining on something or while I'm leaning on something. Uh, now this is uh, talking about food mm-hmm. and how about when we drink? Are there etiquettes when we're drinking? There are many etiquettes, but the, the, uh, the most important etiquettes is while you're drinking, make sure that you don't drink at uh, one gulp or at one go or one take. Drink in three takes or two takes. Take your time when you drink. Uh, in three gulps. Uh, and Nabi Sallallahu said, Allah Sallallahu Muhammad said, don't drink like the camel drinks. The camel drinks in one go, in one gulp. But drink in two or three. Uh, two gulps or three gulps or three takes uh, or two takes. Uh, so once you drink, drink in two or three Gulps. And this is the practice of the Prophet no, that he drank in. He used to drink like this. He used to drink in, in three or two gulps. And also, from the etiquette of drinking, is that you begin with Bismillah and finish with Alhamdulillah as well. Same thing, like food. The same thing with same food. Same with, uh, with, with food. Um, and also, furthermore, from the etiquette of drinking, don't breathe uh, on the water or on the uh, vessel when you drink. Make sure you don't breathe on it. Rasulullah said, don't breathe on the uh, vessel. Uh, and that usually happens when you have kind of like a cup mm. and you're, you're, you're not, you're not uh, taking the cup away from mm. your That's mouth. Right. <laughs> so you're breathing into it. So mm. you're, not, you're just breathing while you're drinking. Mm. And this is, is this what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. you okay. shouldn't breathe in the, uh, in the cup, but just uh, uh, take your time. Remove it away, breathe, then drink again. Okay. Jazakum uh, khair. We had discussed already that when what what we should do when we are together, mm-hmm. and if somebody invites you and we're eating together, um, how about the uh, serving? If you're hosting people, mm-hmm. um, what is the et- etiquette of uh, serving them food? Who should you serve first? May Allah bless you, Jazakum khair. Very important question. You should serve the people who are on the right. Regardless of their age, regardless of their status, you should serve the people who are on your right side. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on one occasion, he was with Abu Bakr, his, his close friend. And Abu Bakr was on his left-hand side. And another Bedouin man was on his right-hand side. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given uh, a cup of milk, uh, and, or a vessel of milk. He was drinking the milk. Once he finished, he, said to the, he gave it to the man who, who is in his right 
hand side, the Bedouin man. Although Bakr is closer to him, Bakr is his close friend. He gave it to the Bedouin man. And he said, Al Ayman of Al Ayman. Once you have the and once if you have the, any food, you should give it to the person who is in your right hand side. On your right hand side. So uh, this is the Sunnah. You give to the person who is on the right hand side. Another hadith, Nabi uh, Sallam was uh, in uh, in an assembly, and on his right was a young man, a boy, Ibn Abbas. And on his left hand side was all of the Sahaba, the elderly Sahaba, like Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, all the Sahaba. So Rasulullah was given as well a vessel of drink, and he drank the uh, from the vessel, and then he said to Ibn Abbas, "Would you allow me to give it to the elderly people?" He said, "No, I don't. I don't leave your, your preference to any. Uh, your preference. I don't leave it to. I don't. I don't leave anyone to take what you've given me uh, as a preference." So he so Ibn Abbas said, I would, "I would like to take it," <laughs> and he took it and he drank from the vessel before the Sahaba. So you should give it to the person who's on your right hand side. Although, or regardless of his age, regardless of his status, begin with the right, inshallah. This is sunnah. SubhanAllah, this is a good mm. sunnah to mm. learn because it might be logical to give somebody that is older mm. than younger, t- uh, especially if you're that's invited right. somebody right. somebody important and then you have somebody that's younger who is not as important, for example. But this uh, kind of rule the, from the right uh, is the practice of the Prophet. It helps sallam. so much. Imagine if you, have, uh, if you are in an assembly and you don't know their ages. Someone is older than another one. You will get confused. Or if you don't know their status, if you, if you begin with this man, then oh, you will confuse yourself and you probably put yourself in, in, in a very... Awkward position. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good rule to this have just... Begin from the right. From the right. Yeah, everyone is, everyone will, will understand. Naam, inshallah ta'ala. And this is in Sahih Bukhari, in both uh, narrations. Jazakum Allah khair, Sheikh. I know we had just spoken about uh, uh, drinking. Mm-hmm. If we can just come back to it for a second. Uh, what about uh, drinking from uh, a bottle, uh, yeah. not from a cup? What are, th- are there any etiquettes when you're drinking from a bottle? May Allah bless you. Zakallah khair. The main thing, don't drink from the mouth of the bottle. Uh, the, uh, the bottle. Don't drink from the mouth of the bottle. Make sure you drink, you, you, you use a cup and drink from, uh, from the cup. So this is the etiquette. That's the main uh, etiquette, yeah. Well, that said, not don't to just eat. Mm. drink from the bottle. Yeah. You need to pour it into a glass. That's so. right. That's right. The main thing. Uh, what about uh, drinking and uh, drinking or eating mm-hmm. while uh, walking or standing? Uh, you had mentioned that <laughs> our back should be straight. What if situations if you are walking. of walking or standing, uh, eating or drinking? Well, the ulama have uh, different opinions about this. However, uh, they all agree that you should eat while you are sitting down. And you should drink while you are sitting down. But some ulama said that you are allowed to drink while you are standing up. And they brought many hadith. One of them is hadith Ali radiallahu anhu. He said that uh, when he drank while he was standing up, and he said, that, I, said uh, I saw him وسلم, doing this, doing so, drinking while he was standing up. And he saw as well in the sound hadith, he drank while he was standing up at the time of Hajj. Uh, they brought to him a drink of uh, or uh, milk and he drank the milk. And he drank from Zamzam as well while he was standing up. But the ulama said because he did this because he was in a hurry. He didn't have time to sit down. Uh, he was in need to drink quickly and move. Uh, therefore, if you are in a hurry, you can probably drink. Uh, this is uh, how we can uh, bring all the hadith together, all the evidences together. We can say if you are in a hurry to drink, in a hurry, you can probably drink while you're standing up. But otherwise, you should sit down and drink while you're sitting down. Okay, so uh, the, the Concerning rule is the food, to eat. make sure you eat while you're sitting down. Right. Don't eat while you're walking. Because we have in the hadith as well, Anas radiallahu anhu said, uh, don't drink while you, are sit- uh, while, while you are standing up. They ask about food, he said, the food is, more, is worse. Is more uh, able to to eat while you are walking or while you are uh, standing up. However, some uh, Sahaba used to eat while they were uh, standing up and walking. Therefore, we would say it's prefer uh, pref- uh, preferable to sit down and eat, and preferable to sit down and drink. Okay, it is from a Sunnah. Uh, but if you if there is a need that you need to eat, you need to drink while you are standing, then you can do so, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so the, the mm-hmm. rule is, is, the recommendation is to sit, sit down, down and drink while sitting down. And if we say standing, we also mean walking as well. Yeah, you mean walking, So, uh, walking, you should not eat or You shouldn't drink, eat, yeah, unless, if unless there's something. There's, 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 there's a reason, yeah. Uh, 
And we also have This is the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, opinion of uh, Shawkani, uh, opinion of Sanani in Subh al-Salam. Most of the ulama, oh, I mean uh, many ulama has this opinion that you should that that, that uh, it is recommended to sit down and uh, it is uh, allowed in the time of uh, necessity to, to drink while standing up. And it's also, it makes sense that, well, you know, you're in a relaxed position mm-hmm. when you are eating and it's kind of a process that you need to take gradually. That's right. And uh, even with yeah. the one gulp, yeah. <laughs> uh, rule, because it's a, it's mm-hmm. it's a it's something that you should do slowly, and you should not hurry up and, and That's eat. Right. Uh, and there is hadith as well that says, um, if you drink while standing up, then vomit. And in Sahih Muslim, if you if you if you if you drink the water and you are standing up, then vomit the water. Uh, and and that, that shows that you should sit down. You should sit down. Jazakumullah. Uh, uh, what about um, when? the time of eating and drinking, mm-hmm. especially eating, mm-hmm. because uh, you get hungry, for example, uh, d- depending on how mm-hmm. or what time you work, maybe right when Asr mm-hmm. uh, prayer uh, co- is called, mm-hmm. uh, w- what should you do when there's time for prayer and food and prayer are involved in the same time, uh, that yeah, situation? What should you do in a situation very good where question. Exactly. Allah if If you are starving, very hungry, and the food is there ready, and the prayer is called, or the adhan is called, then you should eat first. If you are not starving, you should uh, go and pray first. And also, generally, if you are eating, don't eat so much. Eat that which is enough for you. Eat a third of your uh, stomach, and leave a third for the water, and a third for your breathing. And this is sunnah in general. You shouldn't eat so much. If you eat so much, that will cause your heart to be... um, uh, I mean, I mean to be uh, we call it qaswa in Arabic, meaning that uh, it will become uh, not soft. It will not. Uh, if you uh, ask yourself in Ramadan, for example, if you eat so much and you go to the tarawih, you go to the prayer, you won't feel that you are comfortable. You feel that you are busy. Uh, you are heedless, isn't it? You won't be able to focus on the salah and on the Quran. So eat that which is enough for you. And then you should go to the prayer, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanallah. And it's, it's medically mm. you know, sound that mm. if you eat so much, mm. uh, you become so tired because you know, the blood is rushing to your stomach to digest the food. And it's not That's healthy. Right. Yeah, you won't be able your to body focus. doesn't, you know, your stomach can't digest that much. Mm. And it takes a long time. So it really affects our focus, That's right. even if we're not praying. And then when we're praying, which we should have the most focus, mm. uh, it affects our focus. And we, if we... Uh, we've all experienced it at mm. some point or another. We've, we ate a lot. So it's a good rule to have mm. not to eat a lot. Not and uh, mm. only if you're starving should you eat uh, something before you go to Salah. Going and to also salah. we have in the hadith, There is nothing that you have filled. There is nothing that you can fill worse than your stomach. Jazakum so make sure that you don't eat so much. Jazakum Allah khair, Shaykh. I know there's uh, more uh, to it, but uh, alhamdulillah, we've alhamdulillah. covered the basics. Jazakum Allah khair for watching the excellence of manners. And I'd like to thank again uh, Shaykh Saeed for uh, everything he said. Jazakum Allah khair. Uh, join us again next time on the excellence of manners. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fortunate is he, fortunate is he, who remembers Allah abundantly. Worldly distractions cannot mildly sway his thoughts of Allah and judgment day. Righteous is he, righteous is he, who bows to one he cannot see. Whose deeds do not spring without Bismillah Fulfilling his tasks with perfect taqwa